You're watching Action News at 11, live local late breaking. Good evening, I'm Alan Marston. And I'm Kira Clapper. Thanks for joining us. Tainted ground turkey is being recalled across the U.S. tonight and here in California in a national outbreak of salmonella. At least 76 people have been sickened in 26 states from coast to coast. The lone death was in Sacramento County. Reporter James Shugel explains what to check for in your kitchen. Grocery store workers were given the news late Wednesday. Time to pull Cargill-produced ground turkey, both fresh and frozen, from store shelves. It could be contaminated. In fact, Cargill is voluntarily recalling 36 million pounds of ground turkey, processed at its Springdale, Arkansas facility. Production has stopped at the plant after internal and federal investigations showed a link between its ground turkey and this outbreak. The president of Cargill's turkey processing business said suspending production until we can determine the source of the Salmonella Heidelberg at our Arkansas facility and take corrective action is the right thing to do. Cargill's managers say they're closely examining every part of the production process. They have found new ways to ensure food safety and eliminating foodborne illnesses. A majority of the recall ground turkey affects honeysuckle white ground turkey, both 85% and 93% lean. And all the recall ground turkey bears the number P-963, a federal inspection mark. Until the company and federal officials can determine the exact cause of this outbreak, this Arkansas plant will stay closed, and consumers will be left with one less option at the grocery store. That was James Shugel reporting. State public health officials in California say the tainted turkey meat has been sold here under the brand names Kroger, Honeysuckle White, and Riverside. Affected retailers include Winco, Food for Less, and Foods Co. We have a link to the recall information on our website, khsltv.com, under news links. Back here in the North State, an Orville man is under arrest tonight for sexual assault and kidnapping three months after the reported rape happened. According to Orville police, back on May 2nd, 27-year-old John Cummins forced the 21-year-old woman into her own car at the Las Plumas Shopping Center on Oro Dam Boulevard. From there, he reportedly drove her to the Palermo area where he sexually assaulted her. Just last week, that same victim ran into her alleged attacker at a local business and called police. Cummins was arrested today and booked into the Butte County Jail for sexual assault, kidnapping and carjacking. His bail is set at $800,000. There is a major development in the Long Beach murder with a Chico connection. Long Beach investigators have made two arrests in the case, one of them in Chico. You may recall detectives were in Chico earlier this year passing out flyers and searching for clues after the March 24th shooting death of Philip Williamson, a Chico native. Well, today, the Long Beach Police Department announced two arrests in the case. On Friday, 33-year-old Rosemary Sayeg of Granada Hills was arrested. The very next day, her husband, 28-year-old Marcel Maccabee, was arrested in Chico. Detectives say the pair killed Williamson because he was carrying $500,000 in cash and several pounds of medical marijuana obtained in Chico. Police say more arrests are expected. The clock is ticking for the town of Paradise. The area there is the largest municipal, municipality west of the Mississippi River. Without a sewer system, and waste is becoming a bigger issue as time passes, Paradise Town Council met Tuesday night to discuss the topic and narrowed their options on how to deal with it to two. The first is partnering with the Tuscan Ridge Golf Course to build a treatment facility on that property. The second and more popular option is uh, building a sewage pipeline down the Skyway to connect with the Chico treatment plant. Well, they already have a plant in place that is already underutilized, that needs more capacity brought into it, that we could literally provide them. And we could provide all the capacity that we need up here for our commercial areas, and it still would not reach their capacity. There are still several factors that need to be addressed before the Paradise Town officials can present the project to the Chico City Council, but many on the ridge are optimistic this is the beginning of the solution to their problem. Thousands of Federal Aviation Administration employees and contract workers are without jobs tonight while Congress is on vacation. The White House is urging lawmakers to end the stalemate over FAA funding now in its 12th day. Joel Brown reports. Across the country, there are empty work sites at hundreds of airports. Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood implored lawmakers to resolve their standoff over FAA funding. Come back to Washington. Leave your vacations just for a couple hours. Come back, Congress. 
<laughs> help, help your friends and neighbors get back to work. The stalemate has furloughed 4,000 FAA employees and put at least 70,000 contract employees out of work. Something as simple as not working for a week has a big impact when you, you know, work hourly. The government stands to lose more than a billion dollars in airline ticket taxes that can't be collected during the shutdown. This is a lose, lose, lose situation that can be easily solved if Congress gets back into town and does its job. Passengers who could have saved a few bucks by not having to pay ticket taxes saw those savings disappear. Within hours of the shutdown, most airlines raised their fares to pocket the difference. The holdup in Congress is over union organizing and air service to rural communities. Yeah, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid sent a letter to House Speaker John Boehner urging a clean, short-term extension while both sides work out their differences. Boehner said the Senate should just pass what the House already sent over. That was Joel Brown reporting air traffic controllers and airline inspectors are funded separately, so they have continued to work. Here in the North State, two local airport projects have come to a grinding halt because of the stalemate on Capitol Hill. Today, an airport spokesman in Reading told Action News that a $6 million terminal expansion project is now on hold. Bidding was expected to begin for nearly $3 million in runway fixes at the Benton Air Park in West Reading. That project is also at a standstill now. Well, we spoke with an airport manager in Chico who says the city's airport is not impacted by the shutdown at this point. Now to the southeast where record-breaking heat continues. Little Rock, Arkansas was 114 degrees today. In Memphis, Tennessee, they hit 108. At least two firefighters in Montgomery, Alabama had to be treated for heat-related emergencies. Back towards California, an excessive heat warning has been issued in Arizona where afternoon highs reached up to 116 degrees. In Phoenix, temperatures reached 1 12 and hydration stations as they're called were set up around the city offering free water and free hats. The city started setting up water stations following the summer of 2006 when a heat wave killed 85 people. Well, that's just unbelievable that it's going on. We're we're still not doing too bad Lucky. here on the North State. Yeah. yeah. Chris Kuiper joins us now with our first look at the forecast. Yeah, it was a little hotter today. We had a few triple digits in the valley, but boy, just barely and easily could be 110, 112 out there here on the North State. But instead, our summer has still been relatively comfortable for us and temperatures now cooling off rather quickly after what was again a bit of a warmer day today. Current temperatures now in the valley well in the 70s. In fact, 69 our current temperature in Marysville and Yuba City. The Delta breeze really kicking up now at this current moment, and that's all pointing to what's going to be another cooler day in our forecast for tomorrow. So the rest of the country broils in the August heat where we're going to enjoy a nice day. 71 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. 84 degrees by noontime warming up. But for us, again, that's not too terribly bad. And then as we go into the afternoon hours, temperatures well, right around 90 or in the low 90s, but certainly no sign of triple digits in our forecast for Thursday. I'll come back in a little bit. We'll take a look at that extended forecast and talk about how cool the weekend is going to be. Thanks, Chris. An Action News update now on a grisly discovery near Happy Camp in Siskiyou County. Authorities have so far been unable to identify the skeletal remains of a man and woman found last week in a remote area. Deputies found one body near an abandoned truck and the other about 300 yards away. Now the remains are being sent to Chico State, where anthropologists will use DNA and dental records to try to identify them. For now, the case has been classified as a homicide. Glen County divers have recovered the body of an Orland man believed to have drowned in Black Butte Lake. Sheriff's officials say the body of 34-year-old Luis Salgado Tenorio was pulled from the water this morning after it surfaced about 100 yards offshore. That's the same area where Salgado Tenorio disappeared during a swim while boating with his family on Sunday. He was said to be a good swimmer. He was even reported to be a former cliff diver. An autopsy is planned to determine the exact cause of death. A Chico man fired his gun to chase away an intruder at his Humboldt Road home this morning. The startled husband and his wife woke up to someone standing next to their bed. The 17-year-old intruder began slowly walking away, and that's when the husband grabbed his gun and chased the teen, firing two gunshots into the ground in his backyard. The boy eventually was caught by police. 
Police say that teen likely was on drugs. He was booked into Butte County Juvenile Hall on burglary charges. Well, advocates are calling it the repeal, calling the repeal of Chico's medical marijuana ordinance a major setback, but city officials are calling it a precautionary move. As we first told you last night on Action News at 11, after much discussion, the Chico City Council voted to repeal the ordinance just weeks after it passed. Brian Callahan has reaction. Uh, I knew going in that we would probably have to make changes. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure what those changes would be. I knew that we'd have to make some amendments somehow. Those changes came in the form of an outright repeal of the medical marijuana ordinance the Chico City Council has been fine-tuning for nearly three years. It also came less than a month after the same council approved the ordinance, despite a letter from the U.S. attorney who warned the ordinance violated federal law. Council members say after reading the letter and talking with the U.S. attorney, they felt it was best to take a step back. They clearly said what you're doing is illegal and uh, we will prosecute. And I think they're looking for um, a place to make a case. Proponents of the ordinance say they are disappointed that the council let themselves be bullied by the federal government, but say they accept the decision. If you reiterate a threat and it comes from the federal government, that's going to scare people. And it obviously scared our city. Um, and that's understandable. I, you know, I'm scared of the federal government. I'm scared of our district attorney. They have power that I don't have. Even though the ordinance was repealed, both sides say they will continue working toward a plan that can satisfy local, state, and federal law enforcement. We just need to take a step back, reconsider it, uh, but I'd really like to be able to move forward with the intent of Prop 215 sometime in the future. Every time uh, a challenge comes up, it's an opportunity for more clarity, and it's an opportunity to come back and, and represent the facts and get everybody in a comfortable place. For Action News, I'm Brian Callahan. Well, there is word that council members are discussing plans to tweak the ordinance. The city attorney is also researching the law and will present her findings in six months. Coming up next on Action News at 11, dozens are arrested in an international child porn ring. And what investigators found is beyond disturbing. The man is long since dead, executed in Florida, but newly discovered DNA may tie serial killer Ted Bundy to many more murders. We'll bring you the details. But first, here's a look at today's closing numbers from Wall Street. You're watching Action News at 11 on NBC24 with Alan Marsden, Kira Clapper, AccuWeather with Chief Meteorologist Chris Kuyper, and Gerard Moncure with Sports.